I'm going downtown. Me too. Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture. In this episode, we are summarizing the eighth episode from season five of the Sopranos series titled Marco Polo. The episode first aired on April 25th, 2004. In the beginning, we see Little Carmine and Johnny Sack are still handling their conflict. Little Carmine is sticking to his plan of recruiting soldiers to help him in the Cold War he is having against Johnny Sack. Moments later, Little Carmine's boat is seen damaged and sinking. We see Phil's car was severely damaged after the stunt Tony pulled on him in the prior episode. After Tony chased him into driving right into a truck, Phil now wants payback for the damages Tony caused. Johnny Sack decides to have Tony pay for the repairs as a way of making Phil happy and as a way of making sure Phil stays loyal to him. Tony then calls up Salvatore Bompincero's wife, Angie Bompincero, who now runs the car shop that Salvatore used to run. Tony has Phil head over to the body shop and passes on the financial cost of repairing Phil's car to Angie. Angie expresses to Tony that Phil is trying to milk her for everything he can and Tony reminds her that it was her idea to take over and manage the car shop, not his. When Phil's car is finally fixed, he shows up and says that the seat is not sitting perfectly straight at 12 o'clock. Tony asks Blondetto to check in on the car when Phil is there to push back on Phil trying to con them for additional unneeded repair costs. Blondetto sits down in Phil's car and confirms that the seat is in perfect condition and that it is in fact facing at 12 o'clock. Phil of course does not care that Blondetto confirms the car is in good condition and Phil walks away from the car and leaves it to be worked on yet again. In another scene, we see Carmela is planning a surprise birthday party for Hugh, her father, who is turning 75. Carmela heads over to Tony's and tells him that she would like it if he stayed out of this family gathering to make the transition easier on her and the family. Tony appears not to be bothered by this at first and says that he planned on not going to her father's birthday party anyway. Tony tries giving some cash to Carmela to help with the cost but she refuses the money and suggests Tony use the cash to pay for some additional therapy sessions instead. Tony gets offended by this remark. He tells Carmela that she no longer needs to be concerned about his well-being and that she is the one who needs to attend therapy sessions, not him. Later on, as we catch up with Bobby and Junior, we see Bobby tells Junior about Hugh's upcoming surprise birthday party. And Junior decides to ruin the surprise by calling Hugh up to congratulate him on his upcoming birthday celebration, which inadvertently ruins the surprise, even though Bobby asked Junior not to ruin the surprise for him. Hugh seems happy about the upcoming celebration, even though Junior ruined the surprise. Hugh finds out shortly thereafter that Tony will not be attending, and Hugh protests the idea. He says that he himself will not attend his own birthday party if the man of the house is not there to welcome him. As a way of making him happy and not having to cancel the celebration, Carmela is then forced to ask Tony to attend. Carmela calls up Tony to ask him to come and Tony says that he made other plans with Syl, but will make an exception and attend regardless. I don't feel like I'm sitting at 12 o'clock. Remember, I am summarizing the entire series, so subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. I will be reviewing other TV shows, works of literature, and movies as well. Let me know what you would like me to summarize in the future in the comments section below. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content, and visit our Spring Store for merchandise. Doing this helps my channel out tremendously. I thank you for your support. At the celebration, we see everyone is having a great time. Near the end of the party, Hugh begins to open his gifts and Tony asks him to open his first. When he opens the package, he is shocked to see Tony has gifted him a Beretta Jubileo shotgun. Hugh loves the gift and Tony tells him to take it with him the next time he goes hunting. We see just how much Hugh loves Tony and his antics. But Carmela's mother, Mary, is ashamed of Tony's behavior at the celebration. We learn that Mary was the one who originally gave Carmela the idea to keep Tony from attending the party. Mary invited her friend, Dr. Russ Fagoli, who she considers to be a quote-unquote proper Italian, whereas Tony is a street mob boss. Because of this, Mary did not want her friend, Russ, to rub elbows with Tony who she considers low class. Mary was the one who felt embarrassed about Tony's behavior 
and tried convincing Carmela to try and prevent Tony from attending the birthday celebration. And it in fact worked until Hugh objected. Mary is further embarrassed when Dr. Fagoli feels he is outclassed by Tony presenting such a prestigious gift to Hugh. Figoli responds by stating that Beretta never exports their best Beretta Jubileos, insinuating that the gift is not the best Beretta has to offer. Tony is of course upset at this and simply walks away before going off on Dr. Figoli. In the follow-up scene, we see Carmela confronts her mother Mary and she chastises her mother for bringing her snobbish friend Dr. Figoli and she further scolds her for trying to bar Tony from attending in order to protect her reputation in front of her friend, Dr. Russ Fagoli. She tells Mary that she didn't really want to help her get through the breakup with Tony, she was only protecting her own reputation. For a brief moment, Carmela sees Tony as a victim yet again, and this act of demeaning Tony on Mary's part ends up drawing her slightly closer to Tony, much like a teenager would when they're going through their rebellious phase. Carmela ends by pointing out that Mary is merely ashamed of her Italian heritage and humble upbringing. Carmela reminds her mother that her so-called high-class friend Dr. Fagoli was himself born and raised on Arthur Avenue in the Bronx and merely pretends to be someone he is not. In the end, Carmela and Tony end up making love in the pool. As we catch up with Blandetto, we see he is not happy with the way his life is going. He feels he is not making as much money as he should be making. When he is contacted by Angelo Gareppi and Rusty Milio, who themselves are supporters of Little Carmine, they share that Carmine wants a hit to be placed on Joey Peeps for taking out Lorraine Caluso because she insisted on paying tribute to Carmine rather than Johnny Sack. We see Blundetto is upset at how much more Tony has than he does. His house is enormous and even his own two sons say they love being at the Sopranos and no longer want to be at Blundetto's home. Blundetto ends up deciding to take the hit job offered by Angelo and Rusty. As Joey Peeps is leaving a brothel with his escort, he and the escort enter Joey's car. Blundetto walks up to the driver's side, knocks on the window, and as Joey rolls down the window, he draws down on Joey and takes him out as well as the escort. The car is in drive and ends up rolling forward over Blandetto's foot and he ends up limping away and drives off. That was episode number 60 titled Marco Polo. To watch the next or previous episode summary, click on the link in the description or at the end of this video. Consider supporting us on Patreon. Check out our merch store, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. See you on the next one. Tony, right? Well, you come here too? We upload new videos every week so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.